Okay, this is a uh, feedback for competition three. And uh, so first impressions, uh, it's a bit minimal at the moment. Uh, I like the fact it's a drum and bass track and you're kind of in with the style. You've got the right tempo, 176 BPM, and you're understanding that it's a lot of hi-hat information that you need to be dealing with. But there needs to be a lot more um, variation in the drum beat from the start. And um, there are lots of different ways you can do that. And you should be using more samples for drum and bass and layering the sounds and generally making the patterns longer. So if we just uh, listen to the first bit. Right, kick drum. So we're using, we're using a <clears throat> ultra beat for the kick drum here. So I, get, I would make this a four bar pattern to start off with it sounds a bit you know it's just too repetitive you know so let's just double that out up to uh if i can do that let's undo that double it up let me go a bit bigger there we go you should be able to find it difficult to do there we go right so and then we just make this pattern a bit longer Boom, boom. So then we can go have another little variation there. And then we can copy that whole thing again using the Alt key. So instantly a bit more interesting. Okay, so that's the first thing you can do. Again, well, you want to, uh, in the mix wise, you really want to make sure that you use the EQ on the kick drums. And uh, you should use compression. Let's have a look at what we've got on the compression. Yeah, nice. We can try different flavors of compression as well. A bit harder. Release time is very important. Yeah, that's harder, like that. So let's have a look at the hi-hat pattern. Uh, not bad. You've got a space designer on this, which is adding a lot of kind of hiss and sizzle to it. It's quite nice, but you might want to um, kind of maybe make the envelope a bit tighter. like that but this needs to be a bit more an interesting pattern now an interesting thing about hi-hats I see you've got a hi-hat bank here is that, that each note will cut off the note that's just played they're kind of in a mono group so if we start using uh, this, this. So, not that one there maybe there maybe just uh, So let's just copy that a few times. Okay, do stuff like that. And again, you can use pitch bend on this. Could be quite good. Uh, if we go to the ultra beat, and uh, somewhere in here, somewhere in here, if I can find it, is the pitch bend. Uh, I think it might be down here. Bend the range. Oh, I'm not sure where it is actually. Um, Oh, maybe it being tricky to find actually uh, but you can automate you can change the picture stuff so find the note that we're on this one a bit more like that a bit lower lower the pitch and we can try another little effect on that we can try putting a delay on that uh, so if we use um, just an echo and took the wet down quite quiet, uh, feedback to zero, so it's only one delay. Put it to 16. Okay, so that's the kind of thing you can do with the hi-hat, 
But again, you want to think about doing variations in this and doing little stops. So the fact that you've looped it like this isn't very good. Um, you really want to try and create as much variation as possible. So if we just uh, say take this bit and separate it out and then we can do something different with this. We might find another hat here. That one there. Yeah, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's the hi-hat. Let's look at the snare. Not a very large snare. What we've got, it's got a big drum machine here. But we could do variations by doubling up. And maybe uh, you can have ghost snares as well. So, so if we uh, copy this part, no, no, we won't copy the part actually. I'll just, um, what we'll do is just, there we go, there's one there. Take that down, quiet, make that quieter with the velocity tool. Actually, these are very quiet, let's turn them up. Just loads more percussion. Okay, so once you've done that, uh, what you can do, start when you've done loads more variations to your drums, we can group them all together. So if we get all the drums together like that, and then control click, we can create a stack. We can't use the big room because that's already part of a stack. So we're just gonna group these four like that with shift and then control, and then we can create a, flat, a track stack. And uh, that puts it all into one little thing. And then we can do something like uh, maybe add a distortion over the whole thing. So just a little bit bit crushing, for example. You see what that sounds like when we put the loop in. It's a nice loop what you've done there. I mean, I like the way you how you've cut it up. It's quite interesting what you've done there. Um, you, what you want to do is you really want to automate some of this filtering. So turn the envelope off and turn it into touch, and then we can. So that and that will copy that. When you're done, go to read. So, uh, yeah, that's a good way. That's the first thing you really need to think about is creating interest in the drums. If that's the way you're going with a kind of drum and bass mix, then we really want to see drum programming and less looping. I mean, if we look at this line here, it's a lovely line, what you've come up with. But then you just copy it. We need a variation. Let's uh, see if we can, so on this version here, do some, do some variations, some quick variations. We can go, let's uh, take out a solo. Do the um, inversions. So we've got a variation now if we hear those two bits together. 
drop things out to add interest so if we just uh if i highlight all of those just before the where it kicks in um which is there highlight them control them to mute them so we're coming in Again, there you could drop all of those out just have the loop not even that maybe not quite that much maybe you want to keep those notes there uh, another thing you can think of is crashes crashes are always good so if you've got a Okay, so at this point we put a crash. Again, add some interest. Obviously you can't loop then, which is a issue. But you just generally looping is looping is bad, okay? Don't do it. some kind of filtering on the loop we can go if you press a we can see what's going on with the loop where is it here it is uh, if we change that to auto cut off you can say just that bit we want it to go down like so so it comes in <laughs> Not sure what this section is i'm assuming you're going to have a sample or something in there but again it's a little bit too repetitive uh add some more percussion in there more loops try some new things not bad sound why doesn't it come in from the beginning just come straight in with that then have some kind of bass line I mean that's when I mean I'm assuming that's when your kind of bass line would come in uh, you could have it fading in you know you could um you could use a bit of automation here just track automation just have it fading in over a few bars like um with automation Again, a little uh, stop there just to add some interest put a little effect in there you can always look at some of the effects in the Apple loops if you look for say uh, fill drum fill you can say um, well let's just find something that's gonna be weird that for, that for example that's pretty mental you can stop playing and I'll just whack that in somewhere uh what there uh make sure that the level is not too mental um yeah so you know what i mean and then you'd have some kind of variation there on this um hi-hat bank you know maybe a faster um ride is that the ride is that the ride yeah so you'd probably do something like do that on eights is quite popular but variations some variations on that and then try um, velocity variations so I'll just change half of those quieter in the mix as well maybe pan them it's 
So, um, yeah, you haven't really done anything with the samples. Um, there are no samples. You've got some samples here. You can just try putting some effects on those. Car four. Car four. Like, you put that, put, do that as all, um, bounce that in place. Uh, leave that. And um, you can then do some uh, flitch, flick, uh, f flex pitch on this. Uh, where is it? Here it is. This one. We just turn that on and we go to flex pitch. And then we can look in this down here. Find those pitches. There they are. Somewhere. There they are. So if we, if we just get them all, play them together. Rain. Rain. Oh, This one the other way, so you got them coming out of different sides. And that's adding interest. So it's just like doing more with the effects, essentially. That's what you need to do. I mean, there are some good ideas in here, um, but it's just a little bit sparse in places, especially in terms of the samples and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, the time is right. It's got to be three minutes exactly. So uh, just fade it out so it's three minutes. You can lose marks like that. And just more variation. That really is the key to this. That'd be good.